Hey everybody, I'm Mitchell Wazinski, uh, time-based media major, animation student at Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. I just graduated and uh, I just wanted to share something with you guys. Uh, it was uh, it was probably one of the coolest experiences I ever had at Myad. Um, also one of the most inspiring people I've ever met. Uh, her name is Terry Hardin. She's an amazing artist. She she has uh, an impressive resume. She worked for Disney, um, Jim Henson. She's close friends with Whoopi Goldberg, Michael Jackson, Bill Murray. And uh, this is a, a speech that I was present during. And I didn't actually, didn't get formally recorded, but I, I was so inspired that I decided to find everybody, hunt down all the footage of everybody that attended. Um, like somebody had an audio recorder and uh, a couple cameras were running here and there and uh, so I got the footage and I pieced it all together and managed to get a, a good chunk of the speech probably about 90 percent of it back together and into something that you can enjoy too and uh, and so here it is uh, I hope you enjoy uh, thanks a lot how many other than animators? Awesome. And what do you do that you're you're non-animators? Video, 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 sound, sculpting. Sculpting. You're sculpting. What's your medium? Well, besides, ooh, I mean, uh, you're. Uh, it's my RPM. It's my RPM class, but it's not my book. I think sculpting is very. It rocks. I love it. I love it. It's my it's my thing of choice. My mother was a watercolor artist, and I drew for years. But I was saying to Philo, or saying to Tom, uh, is that uh, for me, two-dimensionally was always a challenge. I always had to have a model, whereas I can sculpt from memory. And I think the reason is not because I'm super talented, but because uh, people are three-dimensional. So I could just turn and sculpt the back. And a lot of two-dimensional artists like the idea that they don't have to draw the back or the front. They just, you know. But for me, it was a challenge. and. Uh, trying to fit something three-dimensional in a two-dimensional dimension. Faces, I was fascinated by faces, and you often found me staring. So, um, so that's what I did. I would do portraits of people's animals, and do portraits of people's, you know, people and their families, and that put me through college. I also designed elaborate costumes for Halloween parties. One year during Halloween, I made $7,000 on my costumes alone, just winning prizes, and thought, ooh, I, I like drawing, but, Sculpting the costumes was a lot more fun and a lot more profitable for me. So um, one year I did Magenta from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, a Kiss costume. Um, what else did I do? Magenta silver out, uh, gold outfit. And then I did uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, a Kabuki Lion Man, and I can't remember the uh, the alien, and I can't remember the fifth one I did. But my alien took a $3,000 prize, so I was really thrilled. And, um, and I just watched movies and did stuff. The first thing I did, I think, on a big scale was a Wookiee. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with Star Wars. I fell in love with Star Wars, and it was all before most of you were born, I'm sure. How many times have you seen Star Wars? Um, well, that's an interesting question. Go ahead, Jerry. It's an interesting question. How many times have I seen Star Wars in the first year? 185 times and there was no internet there was no videos there were no dvds there wasn't even vhs i saw it all the time in the theater but as an artist you guys will understand how this happened okay i walked into a movie theater at the time it was 1977. up until that point the only science fiction i could see was 2001 and i would watch it like this <laughs> because it's so beautiful, but it's the best sleep aid. It's better than Salmon X. I go right out every time. I watch it. And Star Trek, which I absolutely love the original Star Trek. It was on TV. I watched it like a fiend in 1950s horror films. I'm 53 years old. I, I have a hard time believing that, but I actually am. And um, so a friend of mine, who is now my husband, oddly enough, took, mm -hmm. told me about Star Wars. And he gave me a book illustrated by Ralph McQuarrie. First of all, the art was unbelievable. And then I opened this first edition book, paperback, 
and I read a story that's fascinating to me, and I don't advise this, but I cut class to see the film. I literally had to see the film first, so I cut class, and I was just blown away. Not because a way most people were blown away by Star Wars. I saw a way to make money as an artist that I had never seen before. There are actually people making monsters. There are actually people making costumes. There are actually people making animatronic heads. There are actually people <laughs> doing story. I can actually do this? <laughs> now, understand, I'm 16, 17 years old, and I'm like, whoa, I can actually do this? And so I stayed in the theater and wrote down every name in the credits. I went back six times. I'd sit in the theater and stayed through every show. But that would, they kicked you out, so I had to change my clothes, change my hair. I had a bag full of wigs. Remember, I'm a costumer. <laughs> so I'd go into the bathroom and become a different person. <laughs> um, unknowing to me, the theater owner looked at a catwalk and saw this woman with the same bag, or man with the same bag, or a person with the same bag, and began to get suspicious after my 23rd viewing. Elmer Haynes. And he called me on the carpet, and he said, what are you doing? And I said, honestly, here's my list. I'm just writing down all the names of the people who do this, because I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. Because there was no internet, no Google, no cell phones, no nothing. So this is the way you did it. And I also sketched. I did illustrations of, of many of the characters while I was sitting there and watched the movie I'd sketch right down. Because I was really waiting for the credits. The story was, eh. But the, the ending was amazing because it was all these people. And then I would look for them in newspapers to find out who they were and understand who they were. And then I'd go find them. And I found Rick Baker. And I walked up to Rick Baker, Rick Bakers. I said, what can I do to get in this industry? Come in. I haven't really started. I'm just sort of fulfilling, Lots which I tend to do. Here. Or the front seats. These are the rich the people front seats. seats. The front seats. Yeah. We call these the millionaire yeah. seats in the front. <laughs> if you sit in the front, you will become a millionaire. I can almost guarantee it. If that's what you want. Maybe you're all over the world. So for those of you who just joined uh, me, are, I, I'm Cherry, obviously. If you can't recognize me, I'll be more like that. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times people are fascinated by my hair, but that's only because I'm blonde. I, I'm half African American. But you'd never know it to look at me, unless you have really good eyes. My sister is you, okay? I have a sister that looks just like you, except for shorter. Okay? And my father looks like you. And my mother is light-skinned, but she does not look like me. <laughs> so people made mailman jokes about my mother when I was a kid. And they also, um, it's an interesting where God puts you. Um, God puts you in the position that you're in for a reason. And I was born in 1957. Don't count. I'll save you the math. You're artists. <laughs> 53 years old, almost 54. I need, now how much is this true with every other artist? You need every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day. How many? Me. <laughs> every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day. So when was I born? June 21st. And what is June 21st? The longest day in the year. So even God knew before I was born, I needed every second of every minute, of every hour, of every day of the year. Because I'm an obsessive creative. It means when I see it, I must do. Okay, this is a problem when you're a kid. Okay, how many have seen up? I always use this as an illustration. I'll be drawing and someone will be sculpting and I'll go squirt. <laughs> and I'll be sculpting and somebody will be making candles and I'll go squirt. <laughs> I'll be making candles and somebody will be building architectural things and I'll go squirt. <laughs> and I'll come back over here. <laughs> oh, yeah! You know? <laughs> You know, I knit, crochet, I paint, I sculpt, I do all this crazy stuff. And then I act as a puppeteer, and uh, I'm an actor as well. And I'm also in nutrition. Whoa, where'd that one? Let's go! <laughs> nutrition again. And so, uh, so there we go. So, Travis, how are we? Are we still working? I'll keep talking while you still work. Okay? All right, so, do you guys have seen the poster? 
Many people have walked up to that poster. Philo did that for me. Philo and I have been friends for a very long time. Um, 33 years. 33 years. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> 33 years. Star Wars brought us together, actually. Yeah. 183 times watching that movie. Mm -hmm. The guy said to me, uh, why is it so important to you? And when I told him, he said, how'd you like to come for free and bring guests? As long as you tell me when your 100th viewing is so that I can bring the press down here and interview you. And I said, deal. <laughs> and I saw it the first hundred times. I saw it so many times that if you buy Skywalking, which is the bi autobiography of George Lucas, I'm on page three for my viewings. <laughs> it scared George Lucas a lot. He read about me and he went, oh my god, it's a Fruit Loop. <laughs> she's, she's in the movie so many times. And here's the interesting thing. It opened in 1977 and I saw it 63 times before I went to Europe. I backpacked in Europe for three months. I was only supposed to be there one month. But when I got there, remember Squirrel? <laughs> I saw people sketching with chalk. French people sketching with chalk in France. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too, me too! In French, me too, me too must mean the same thing because they said, and I'm there sketching, and people started throwing money. And I was like, whoa, this is cool, let's throw a board. Let's throw a board. And I only had enough for a month, but drawing paid for my other two months. And then I also did puppeteering in Piccadilly Square in, in Europe. I have to tell you, at 19 years old, it's unbelievable to have this experience. When I was 18, I told my mother, me and some friends were going to go to Europe, and my parents said, we'd rather you buy a car. And I said, no, I want to go to Europe, because I know as I get older, that's going to get farther away from me. I just can feel it. I'm going to have kids or I'm going to have a life. And maybe I'll have bills and maybe I'll have a job and I don't want to miss Europe. So I backpacked all through Europe. I got to touch Stonehenge. I got to walk and touch those rocks. And my two friends didn't want to go with me. And I was like, okay, see ya! <laughs> and I'm 19. I just wanted to touch Stonehenge. If you go to the Louvre today, there's a pyramid over it, a glass pyramid. And it's really sad that this has happened. A lot of French hate it, but I don't like it because in 1977, there used to be stairs going up to the Louvre. And how many have seen the Winged, winged Victory in a book? If you're artist, you've seen the Winged Victory. But I saw her, she was like this big. And I'm sorry, my mental capacity for how big she was going to be just wasn't happening. So in the Louvre, there were two doors, they open, and you're going upstairs. And you're going upstairs. Oh, I got a big pack on my back. Oh, man. Wow. And we walk a little bit. And then we're stairs. <laughs> oh, man. Whoa, I hope this is good. And you get about the third level of stairs, and you see the tips of her wings. And you start to climb, and she starts to reveal herself. And you're like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. And you keep going, and she just keeps rising. And when you're at the last stair, you realize she is huge. And you go, oh. <laughs> And then you hear, Terry, is that you? What? <laughs> Someone, my next door neighbor. 3,000 miles away. <laughs> People go, everybody knows you. What the heck? Oh, hey. She goes, hey. Lisa, big pictures, you walk up to the Mona Lisa and it ends up being like this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? She's a postage thing. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. I know I have a magnifying glass here somewhere. <laughs> wow. I mean, you just... Uh, so it's really great to go out and see some of these things. Michelangelo is my favorite artist. So I spent a lot of time with Michelangelo and I also like, uh, I also like swords. So when I went to the Tower of London, um, I, any two-handed sword I would see, which is swords that are about this tall, I would get really excited. And I'm American, and you can see.